Well, control of the Senate can make or break a presidency. And with just hours left to campaign in election 2020, Senate Republicans are fighting to save their majority with as many as 10 GOP-held seats at risk. Capitol Hill correspondent Eric Rosales reports now. Eric? Well, Tracy, as we know, Republicans have control of the Senate 53 to 47. Three or four races will determine on who actually keeps control or loses control of the Senate. Of course, we also have to look at the White House because, as we know, the vice president serves as the president of the Senate for all tie-breaking votes. So both sides are working at a feverish pace right now, vying for votes. Florida Senator Rick Scott not up for re-election, but still campaigning fiercely for his fellow Republicans. He was on the trail last Thursday in Arizona with Senator Martha McSally, appointed to fill the seat of the late Senator John McCain. Senator McSally is battling to hold on to her seat against her Democratic opponent, former astronaut Mark Kelly. It's very important that we win this race so we keep a Republican uh, majority in the Senate. And Senator Scott says winning is all about getting out the vote. Well, I think both sides are doing the same thing. You got to get your vote out now. That's, you know, I've had three statewide races, and there, this is a 50 50 state. You got to get your voters out to vote. In Georgia, both the state Senate seats are at play. Republican David Perdue is fighting to win re-election, and Democratic candidate for Senate Baptist Pastor Raphael Warnock wants to win the seat currently held by Republican Kelly Leffler. He agrees votes matter. Young people tell me all the time my vote doesn't make a difference. I say to you, of course it makes a difference. Other Senate races that we're going to be watching very closely on election night are in Colorado, Iowa, and Maine. Now, if any of the Republicans lose their seats in those races, that can mean losing control of the Senate. Tracy? Correspondent Eric Rosales reporting from Capitol Hill tonight. Thank you so much, Eric.